All right, thanks for watching. And today I wanna show you explicitly how to show that two vector spaces are isomorphic. For example, let's show that the space of polynomials of degree less than or equal to two. So for example, you know, well, x squared minus two x plus one is in this. And R3, like the vector is one, two, three, are isomorphic. What does it mean for two spaces to be isomorphic? What it means is they sort of have the same form, which means that there is a linear transformation between V and W that is invertible. And remember, or maybe I'll do a video on that, uh, invertible is the same thing here as one to one and onto. So show, there exists T from this one, V to W. V to W, that is one to one and onto. And um, I'll show you later if you want the technique with inverses, but I think this is more important. So, and I'll also show you a really amazing way at the end. Uh, so what should this T do? Well, there's a very natural example. So T, it's from P2 to R3. So it takes, you know, A0 plus A1X plus A2X squared. This is the input of T, and we want an output that's in R3. Well, a very natural way to do this is just to take A0, A1, A2. So define, define T to be this way. T of a polynomial of degree less than or equal to 3 gives you this vector in R3. And there are other ways also, by the way. So isomorphisms are not unique. You could also have, if you like physics, T is the, takes a polynomial as its input and spits out P of zero, P prime of zero, and P double prime of zero, which would be the initial position, initial velocity, and initial uh, acceleration. But here, let's just keep it simple. And there are a couple of things we want to show. We want to show T is linear. We want to show it's one to one and it's on to. Should have mentioned here uh, linear as well. Okay, let's show it's linear. So so let's calculate t of c p plus q, where p and q they're polynomials of degree less than or equal to two. So p is a zero plus a1x plus a2x squared. Q is b0 plus b1x plus b2x squared. Well then, t of cp plus q, it's t of c times a0 plus a1x plus a2x squared plus b0 plus b1x plus b2x squared. And that's T of CA0 plus CA1X plus CA2X squared plus B0 plus B1X plus B2X squared. Now, let's just put terms that are alike together. So this is T of C0, CA0 plus B0 plus CA1 plus B1X plus C A two plus B two X squared. And now remember the definition of T. It takes a polynomial as its input and just spits out the vector of coefficients. So by definition of T, that should be C A zero plus B zero, C A one plus B one, C A two plus B two. Definition of T, and then in terms of addition and scalar multiplication, we can rewrite this as C A0, uh, sorry, A1, A2, plus C1, 
plus B0, B1, B2. Why did I do this? Because this is precisely T of P and T of Q. So this is C, T of A0 plus A1x plus A2x squared plus T of B0 plus B1x plus B2x squared. And that's CTP plus TQ. And therefore, T of CP plus Q is CTP plus C TQ. And therefore, T is indeed a linear transformation. So that's good. We already have one third done. But it turns out the rest is much easier. So let's now show that T is one to one. Okay, write that down if you haven't already or press stop. But don't stop my video. You want to hear me talking, right? Um, but anyway, let me lower the whiteboard now. One to one is very easy to show. So. Because remember, this is the definition, right? So one to one, what this means, suppose T of P equals to the zero vector, which here is zero, 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 and show that P is the zero polynomial. Now, if P is in P2, P is A0 plus A1x plus A2x squared, then T of P is T of A0 plus A1x plus A2x squared. By definition, that is A0, A1, A2. But remember our assumption, we assume this is the zero vector. So by just comparing, we get A0 equals zero, A1 is zero, and A2 is zero. And therefore, what is P is simply 0 plus 0x zero plus 0x zero squared. And this is 0. It's like this commercial meme that says, you know, uh, 0 wrinkles, 0 pores, 0. <laughs> and that's exactly what it is. Lastly, let's show it's onto. Well, and by the way, because you're the same, same dimension, technically you don't need to show it's onto, but on an exam you should, in case you're my student watching. Onto just means if you take an arbitrary vector in R3, you can construct some polynomial such that T of that polynomial is that vector. So, onto. Suppose. A0, A1, A2 in R3 is arbitrary. And then just find P with, again, TP in the space, which T of, with T of P equals A0, A1, A2. But then what is P? It's just a polynomial with those coefficients. So let P be precisely A0 plus A1x plus A2x squared. Then indeed, T of P, that's T of A0 plus A1x plus A2x squared equals to A0, A0, A1, a2. And that's just by definition of t, and we get that this is true. Therefore, we have done, we have found an explicit a one to one and onto function that's linear between those two spaces. Therefore, they are isomorphic. And let me just mention two more methods. So, uh, technically, to show something is isomorphic, it's enough to find an inverse. Again, this is the method I would like to see on exams, but if you want to be sneaky, there are other ways to do this. So other method. Oh, just find an inverse. So let T inverse. Again, it goes from 
um, the output space to the input space. What does T inverse do? T inverse of a uh, number A0, A1, A2. Again, I forgot to say, well, we define T as before, we show that T is linear, and then let T inverse simply be the function that uh, takes a triple as its input and spits out the polynomial A0 plus A1x plus A2x squared then all you really need to show is that t, t of t inverse of a0, a1, a2 is uh, a0, a1, a2, and t inverse of t of any polynomial x plus a2x squared. It's simply the same polynomial. So it's an alternate method of showing this, and uh, this is not too bad. Let me, for example, show the first part. T of T inverse of A0, A1, A2 is T of, again, by definition, T inverse gives you the polynomial. A0 plus A1x plus A2x squared. And what does t do? t takes this polynomial and collects the coefficients. And it's precisely what you want to show. And same, we can do the other part similarly. So, um, so, but the only problem with this method is that you have explicitly to find an inverse. What makes the other method better, I mean, so the first method better, is that uh, you, you never have to define the inverse of t. Um, Lastly, I want to say there is actually an oh my god method. How do you know that they're isomorphic without even finding an isomorphism? Simply because the dimension of P2, it's 3, which is the dimension of R3. So it turns out for finite dimensional vector spaces, if the dimensions are the same, then they're isomorphic. And in fact, uh, there will there will be a video on proving this fact, and it's absolutely beautiful. All right, I hope that you liked it. If you want to see more math, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.